a deli in the First Vienna District. The Vienna zoologist and author, Peter Ivanovitz, would like to shop for a special dinner. Parma ham, Milano salami, or mortadella, he doesn't even look at. Since the owner of this one-of-a-kind gourmet shop in Austria offers insects. Not raw, but deliciously prepared. I would say a good start would be here with the worms or crickets. The crickets come from Thailand, very delicious, spiced with a bit of curry. They would make a tasty appetizer. Besides that, there are the king-size Mopani worms and these emperor moth caterpillars from South Africa. Caterpillars, beetles, ants or grasshoppers on a plate is something that takes some getting used to for Europeans. Not only through all kinds of daring or jungle camps, the consumption of insects is seen a bit less appetizing. Whereas in Asia, Africa and South America, this type of food is a delicacy and a good source of protein. All just a question of getting used to? Very salty. A bit like peanut flakes. The crickets come from Thailand. Crickets? Spiced with a bit of curry. Very delicious. More of, a, more of a curry taste. Genau, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, sehr fein. Sehr fein, right? Yeah. Wrap it up. The insects come from controlled farming operations in China, Thailand, and Colombia. Not cheap. At the moment, you pay for a small packet of crickets, four euros and for a tin of emperor moth caterpillars, as much as 20 euros. Insects as a luxurious meal for Europeans? The scorpions are included as well. Have a nice evening. It took a long time for us in Austria to eat crustaceans. Today we eat scampi, shellfish and snails. They're nothing special to anyone anymore at all. So in the 21st century, we can think of new things to eat. And here the zoologist is very inventive. He wants to do an experiment and serve to his guests as a main meal something daring. Earthworms, or more precisely, an earthworm burger. Peter goes to Thun to visit the worm farmer. We really do not have enough resources on our planet. Soon we will be 8 billion people. The number is rising quickly. To ensure a protein-rich diet, I can really see earthworms as a good way to get a handle on it. And it is healthy for sure. The meat is low fat and has high protein content. Something we have to acknowledge when ensuring the world's protein supply. But are we really ready for insects and worms as a food source? I have a terrible beetle and spider phobia. It creeps me out just to look at them. No, no. Yes, not so bad. There's nothing I could compare it to at the moment, but it's not bad. A little spicy. Mm -hmm. What did I just eat? <laughs> Schnitzel, pork roast, that's what I like. But this, rather not. I don't know what to do with that. Yes, quite acceptable.
Ja. Yes. So Pretzel sticks. Maybe if it were marinated in oil and a bit of pepper. It's missing oil and pepper. What I like to eat? McDonald's, pizza. With this? Would I like to try? No, thank you. Oh, yes, I'd be interested in this. Would you like to try? Yes, please. I assume you've cooked it, right? Absolutely, there's nothing wrong. Okay, I look forward to trying it. Tastes like peanut crisps. I'm aware of the fact that this is for many people in the world a staple and main source of protein. Maybe if you'd grown up with it, you'd eat it. And they would probably say, yuck, dead pig. However, I would not eat it. I mean, what is this? Well, if millions of people live on it, it can't harm me. I still can't believe I'm eating this. Maybe that'll help. How is the taste? Too salty. Tastes like pretzel sticks. I think it's okay. We eat them every day. Cattle, chicken, and pigs. At the moment, we can still afford meat. Our meat consumption is rising. More than 50 billion animals are slaughtered for this worldwide. But before that, they need to be fed. According to the UN, the meat industry needs about 70% of all the farmland in the world. In Austria, the planting of biofuel E10 is not allowed at this time. The EU worries that too much agricultural land would be lost for food production. To expand areas for farming and grazing, every day 30,000 hectares of rainforest are cleared. In commercial intensive livestock production, the animals are brought to slaughter weight in only a few weeks. For this, feed is needed, lots of feed. A third of all the grain in the world is fed to animals. Raised for performance only, kept under poor conditions makes many animals sick. This requires the extensive use of antibiotics. Residues of these are in the meat and lastly on our plates. In addition to this, the cattle are bad feed converters. To produce one kilogram of meat, at least five kilograms of feed is needed. Only 10% of the feed is converted into meat. The animals need most of the energy to keep their metabolisms going. The mass production of animals also uses up more and more drinking water. For the production of one kilogram of beef, about 15,000 liters of water are needed. That is about 80 filled bathtubs. Part of the regular metabolism of these animals is that they eliminate urine and feces. Together, this is between 50 and 60 liters of manure per animal per day. This manure is high on nitrates. Nitrates are an important nutrient for fields. Therefore, manure is used as fertilizer. However, too many nitrates are harmful. As a result of animal mass production in many areas, the soil is over-fertilized and acidic. If our meat consumption keeps growing at the same rate, the worldwide production of meat and sausages will double by the year 2050. This, in turn, will weigh heavily on the environment. The meat industry needs more and more land, water, and grain. On top of this comes the manure and greenhouse gases that contribute to the pollution of the environment. Peter has arrived at the farm. The owner breeds earthworms for compost in unbelievable numbers. A real earthworm paradise. In this building, five million earthworms live on 200 square meters. They produce valuable compost fertilizer. 
the young worms are kept in small boxes. They don't mind living in very confined spaces. Mass production without a problem? Compost worms are very good for mass production. In one of these boxes, there are up to 3,000 worms. Boxes then split so the worms can regenerate and reproduce. In Austria, we have more than 60 species of earthworms. Worldwide, there are around 3,000. The earthworm is actually a string of muscles, mainly protein. It is quite easy to keep without violating any animal husbandry and preservation laws. They live off plant waste and transform this waste into valuable compost. Earthworms are good for the environment and can be raised anywhere in the world. Good, wonderful. There are already, as you can see, as you can see, there are lots of worms in here. I will need a few more, about a thousand. Up to now, the worms have been eating. Now it's time for us to eat them. As a hamburger. What do you think? Have you ever tried that? Sounds quite interesting. I've never eaten a worm myself. Hard to believe. No one would really say, oh, they look yummy. In spite of being skeptical, Mr. Grand sells Peter some of the best species he has. A little box filled with earth. Several hundred earthworms in it. In the Netherlands, this man is at the forefront of insect cuisine. Arnold van Hees was tasked by the UN to research the possibility of insects and worms being the meat replacement of tomorrow. If meat consumption keeps growing, space will become tight. Because we need another planet uh, in order to produce enough meat for everybody. It's just impossible. And the FAO is already predicting this, that uh, one person, the, the head from the livestock division, said already during a big meat conference, he said in 2030, we can't pay anymore for the meat. Only the very privileged and the very rich, they can still pay for beef. But for the others, it's impossible. And that's because, you know, we don't have enough land to produce all that meat. Van Hees has published an insect cookbook. He tries to convince Europeans of this new food source with mealworm spaghetti, salad and pizza or insect kebabs. He is well aware of the initial feeling of disgust. It's psychological. I don't know, it's, it's a kind of food habit. And, um, but it is completely irrational. Because if you look at uh, nutrition-wise, you know, it's, it's excellent food. There's nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely comparable to fish, to pork, to beef. The city hunter on the lookout for nature. Peter wants to hunt for a few earthworms for dinner himself. In a park not far from his home, he is hunting. In principle, this is an optimal spot. Darwin already realized in his time that a piece of arable land can accommodate a weight of earthworms similar to that of the cattle that graze on it. So, from a production point of view, earthworms and cattle need the same area. On one hectare, you find 7 to 20 million earthworms, an impressive number, enough to feed a family with. Peter comes well equipped. He is wearing a special camera, so he can move freely on his earthworm hunt. To catch his prey, he only needs a hammer and stake. We use a method the Americans call worm charming. We ram the stake into the earth and hammer on it. 
we suspect, but do not know for sure, that the earthworms assume a mole is coming. The vibrations imitate the digging of a mole, so they flee to the surface. Let's see what happens. Well, I think the soil is too dry here. We won't find anything. The worms are too deep in the ground. The worm hunt is not successful on a hot day like today. But no problem, Peter is prepared for this. So, my little friends, let's see where you are. Come out. We need something to eat. It is a cumbersome task to get worms out of the ground. I need help with the selection. For one earthworm burger, you need about 150 worms. If one could buy commercially produced earthworm meat in the supermarket, it would certainly be much faster. With ants, it would be much harder to come up with a commercial production. The selection of worms takes about half an hour. Earthworms should never be consumed raw. Like all other raw meat, they could contain parasites that can only be killed by heat. For the meal, the earthworm has to die. But how does one slaughter an earthworm humanely? These animals have a very small volume, but a large body surface. I'd say if they are just dipped into boiling water, they'd be dead in a fraction of a second. We will boil them briefly. That seems to be acceptable. An advantage of our society is that we're not confronted with the actual killing of the animal. Hence, it is easier to eat larger amounts. If we would have to go to the farm and slaughter the animal, we probably would eat less meat. In the same way that Peter would use ground beef, he mixes the worm meat with breadcrumbs and egg, adds some spices, and forms it into patties. For comparison, there will be regular ground beef on offer as well. Now the only remaining question, who will eat this? Peter invited a nutritionist and a gourmet critic. Both are supposed to eat the insect cuisine and give their opinion. The appetizer. Baked mealworms, salted ants, and grasshoppers. Obviously, it tastes good. But how will the main course go? We have the saying, what the farmer doesn't know, he doesn't eat. For that reason, we prepared something everyone knows. Earthworms. Peter wants to serve his burgers hot. Besides the ground beef, the earthworm meat is frying. Since we eat with our eyes as well, Peter garnishes his burgers beautifully. The main course is served. I hope it is hot enough. Please help yourself before it gets cold. It has a little bit of an earthy taste. If you search a bit, you find the taste of brown, fresh earth moistened by summer rain. That's what I would relate it to. Not uninteresting. Reminds me of snails a bit. Actually, what I like is the idea that the meat is almost fat-free. Almost all protein, hardly any fat. A great idea and wonderful alternative. Taste-wise, well, because the way it is prepared, it is very much like a burger. 
However, I am sure the meat needs to be minced. I don't think regular earthworms would be very popular. Not with me. If one can get past the initial disgust, insect cuisine could be a good alternative to reduce meat consumption. The elimination of hunger worldwide will be the most important political challenge in the future. If it is not solved, people will fight wars over food and raw material.